Hello and welcome to Bring the Ring, a new way to handbell. My name is Brenda Austin and it is my sincere hope that through connecting with us today, you will be inspired to use handbells to make a difference, to add value to our world. Let's get out there and bring the ring. Hello and welcome to Bring the Ring. Uh, so glad that you are here so we can connect with one another and talk to some of our composers. You know, the handbell composers, for the most part, are right here and happy to talk to us about their music so that we can reach out, we can connect and, you know, change the world, change the world with handbells, right? That's what we want to do. So uh, welcome back, Matt Compton, to us. I love chatting with Matt. Um, especially about music. I love to pick his brain. He is from Vancouver, Washington, and has been composing for a long time. Uh, had his first piece uh, published when he was 15, and is a avid performer of handbells, clinician, conductor, and really, whenever I have a question about who wrote what, when, where, I ask Matt, because it's in his head all the time. Uh, when he is also the director of the Bells of the Cascade, as well as music director for Salmon Creek United Methodist Church. So welcome back, Matt. Love having you. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to be back. So one of your uh, new pieces with us is, uh, is just a really neat piece, Impressions on Aberyst With. If you have not um, checked it out, we're going to talk about it a little bit today. And um, I don't know, you'll have to talk to us about what you were thinking, but I just, I see mountains when I hear this because it's just, it's so expensive expansive, you know, the sound and the tonality with the use of your chords, as well as where they're placed and the, and the, the ranges, um, just really neat. So talk to us a little bit about impressions on Everest with. Yeah, this was, this was a piece that was kind of, when I started working on it, it was at a time where I really wanted to have a sort of compositional shift of style. So this piece really is a departure from my more bombastic pieces like a Takata on King's Weston or an I Will Arise and Go to Jesus, where it's, it's a piece that takes you kind of on a journey through the tune. Um, it's a great Lenten tune, but it's a very introspective text of whatever text you choose for the tune. But the piece begins with this very free... Um, exposed idea and so in each of these measures the last note of the measure is the first note of the next measure and so it kind of sets up the tonality for the next measure based on the tune um, and then uh, it's firmly established in D minor for a little bit but then it's a gradual dissension of chords and then it takes you in a completely different route entirely. And so I wanted to kind of pull the listener and the ringer along where it's just, it keeps you wondering what's the next thing that's happening. And so Brenda, I like your idea of mountains. I didn't exactly have that in mind, but you kind of get this cascading, um, I guess waterfall sound where it's mountain streams or something, if you want to think of it that way, where you have these big chords and just sort of an echo in the distance sort of effect. And so these cascading eighth notes, they are intentionally softer. And so it's this kind of call and response for the strength of the melody to sort of the questioning response of what's next. And so it has, throughout the piece, it has a lot of chords that are just kind of out of nowhere <clears throat> that create some, some dissonance and then some just surprising resolution from that. Um, but then it just kind of goes through a almost ascension effect um and then just kind of keeping keeping us grounded but yeah so that's kind of the structure and format of the piece i love that idea of the cascading water uh set with the mountains i think that that's a great um illustration for what i hear um orally it's i know as composers sometimes we can get kind of put into a box like we write one yes. piece and then everyone thinks that's what all of our stuff sounds like and you know this is such a departure from Takata on King's Weston that um that I don't think we can put you in that box anymore so <laughs> <laughs> well and and I I am happy about that because it's 
and Brenda, you and I have talked about this numerous times where you and I, we have our boxes that we have unfortunately been put into sometimes. So it's nice to kind of break out of that when given the opportunity with this. And so, oh, you and I have been chatting about potential tunes or styles of pieces that you, that you might be looking for in the whole catalog. And so this is a tune that's been relatively under arranged. Uh, which is something I look for a lot when I'm arranging things because we already have so many amazing grace arrangements or things like that. So my idea was to try and find something that's not been arranged very much. And so with this one, <clears throat> this was a challenge for myself. It was, that's really what the piece also came from was a challenge for myself to break out of that box because so much of it is my comfort zone has been well, I'm out of ideas. Let me throw in a mallet section. <laughs> um, We're all yeah, absolutely, of that. <laughs> absolutely. And so it was one of those things where I was like, "Let's not do that for a second here." And so um, it was funny because I sent this to my home, my uh, hometown music director, Joan Keen, uh, at First Lutheran Church in Colorado Springs. I sent it to her. She goes, "Oh, no mallets or marts." I like this. <laughs> and yeah. so she, she means it lovingly, of course. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, yes, a lot of my, especially my earliest pieces were the Takata and Kings Weston style. Very just intense pieces. And this one's intense in its own, in its own very different way. Um, but I really wanted to focus on the storytelling aspect of music. Because um, with, we're, we're a, we don't have words to bells so a lot of the times we we get drawn into okay so here's a hymn i'm gonna do three verses of it but how how do you tell a story with that and so uh, the first verse in this one is a more reserved verse but then you get the strength of the tune later um but then the the second verse is that just free form sort of excuse me, um, flowing idea. And so I've really been focusing a lot recently on how do we tell the stories with our music? A lot of the times when we get to groups playing a piece, it's, we play the piece, the audience of the congregation appreciates it and we move on. But we, we, for, we tend to forget that music has such an impact in a way that a lot of words don't. And so I think it's really important that as composers, we also take that and give that to the ensembles. Um, but then from there, without the ensembles playing it, our music really doesn't have a lot of meaning to it truly. Um, and so it's one of those things where there's such a wonderful relationship between the, comp the composers and the performers that when we finally can hear these pieces played, what journey did we all go on through this? And so this piece was kind of really at the start of this shift that I had where I wanted to really focus on storytelling and taking people on a journey within the music. Mm -hmm. And I think you've done that. And, you know, bravo for you to, you know, step out of your box and, and go somewhere different. I know Jason has always challenged me that if these are the things that are characteristic of you, okay, refuse to put that in the next piece, you know, just to challenge ourselves. It's easy to go back to what works, but, you know, bravo for you for just going, hey, I'm trying something completely different and I'm going to throw in some funky chords while I'm at it and see what happens. And I love it. So I, I appreciate Jason because he's done that for me too. Because uh, the other day it was on his Twitch stream and I was, he was like, what should I write? I was like, do an advanced original composition. He's like, I, he's like, fine. I will write an advanced original composition when you write me a level one, two to three octave piece. I was like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> so Jason's really good at throwing those challenges out for us. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Well, let's, uh, let's take a listen here. Here we go. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> I I love the cascading. I, I think that's just such a wonderful um, visual with it. Oh, so good. So have you had a chance to conduct this one yet? Yeah, so it's it's relatively new to where it hasn't been put on a festival that I've been able to conduct and my group hasn't been able to do it yet. But hopefully someday I would love to be able to conduct this one. So uh, I don't know. Do you have any recommendations or, or thoughts uh, for directors if they're considering this, how they might approach it or rehearse it? Yeah, this is a this is a much meatier piece um, than than most really of a, what a lot of groups take a look at. So with this one, I would say plan to rehearse it for a while um, because there are so many different ideas throughout the piece that it's really good to lock in each one. So it's one of those where or you'll really want to take the time on the last section to really get the eighth notes 
super solid on their part and then add the triplets or whatever order you would rehearse them. But yeah. you really want to be able to have the time to focus on all of the different ideas and then, yeah, just really, really, really dive into the piece. Cause I think this one, this one takes a little bit more to, to put together. Mm -hmm. I, some pieces, I think groups just need to live with them a little bit longer that, you know, normally you think, okay, we're going to, for maybe if you're doing it for church, we're going to practice it for four weeks and then we're going to play it. And this is one that you might just want to let perk, you know, marinate for a mm -hmm. little bit longer um, so that you really start to feel comfortable with it and the timing. Um, don't be afraid of those, the triplets against the eighth notes. They will yeah. come, but sometimes Absolutely. It just, a choir just needs to live with it a little bit longer. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. I think a lot, I think sometimes we do get so, so caught in the like, Oh, we have four weeks to get a piece together. Take the eight, do it mm -hmm. the next month. Um, yep, yep. kind of keep Absolutely. working on it. Um, yeah, I think, cause I think that's a big thing is that's, that's the scariest part of this piece is that triplets against eighth note section for sure. Um, but it's one of those that, yeah, like Brenda said, it, it'll come. It just, it just take a little bit of time with it. It is a little bit lengthier, but it's a great piece for communion or as a lengthy prelude. Or if you have a service of healing, this is one of those great pieces to where you can really dive into that. For Lent, it's great for mm, your Lenten, mm -hmm. your Holy Week services on Monday, mm -hmm. Thursday, um, or Good Friday. So lots of uses within it to where it's a piece where you want you want to be able to let your group literally breathe with with the piece and just let it have the time and let the expansion of the piece kind of exist within the space well nice job on this i love that you, you stepped out of your box and and did something a little bit different and and to challenge us so you always bring such a positive energy to handbells and i just oh, i love you. what you do and i love your energy and I love your willingness to help anybody, help me help anybody. Um, so thanks for all that you do for our handbell community. And I uh, can't wait to see what you've got next in store for us. Thanks so much, Brenda. I really appreciate you. And, and thank you to everyone who's taken the time to take a look at my music, to play it. It really does mean a lot. And so thank you for supporting all of the composers um, by buying and playing our music. Absolutely. So let's get out there and bring the ring. Thanks for joining us today. Brenda Austin is the handbell editor for Hope Publishing, where we are equipping musicians for excellence. Visit hopepublishing.com or call 1-800-323-1049 for all your music needs. For questions about this episode of Bring the Ring, contact Brenda at brenda at hopepublishing.com. Our show notes can be found on our Facebook page or in the comments below.